thing however that if you're just getting going on this that might prevent you from doing the vibrato all together and that is this see how that sounds great and it sounds clear that's a draw on the two hole and if you can't get that then you can't even begin to do the vibrato. And tap your tongue maybe it helps you. But if you don't have the clear, strong note there, then you can't do the vibrato. Well, perfection isn't required for this, but it's good to aim for. Now I've been carrying the harp with me, working on this vibrato exercise. I've been doing it for a little while now. I've been doing it in the morning, and sometimes when I got to work, I'll, I'll do it in the park a little bit. So you don't need to go for hours and hours at this, but the little times once you put it in there, it's up. If you have a degree of consistency with it. Now, what I did in the intro video there was I played a two-hole drop vibrato. I held it for seven beats, and basically the idea was to do the best vibrato that I could with those seven beats and on the eighth beat. I released it, and it might have sounded a little too loud. Now, like I said, this isn't like a easy listening kind of thing. This is an exercise to get you to improve your pieces into your routines. Maybe try this at a couple different points throughout every day and, and then leave it be. But the two-hole draw sound that you want to start out before you think about it. See, and you could have a metronome. If if I went, and I do have a metronome, if I went in the other room and got it, I could do a prime example. We'll probably do a separate video on that. But you can also just tap your foot, and you can hear what I did in the intro. So there is that heavy release of air there when you get to the eighth beat. And you just, you put up your best vibrato and you're not too concerned with if it doesn't sound good. Sometimes when I'm just starting out for the first time that day, it'll sound kind of rough at first. And then I'll learn to Sometimes just the act of playing the harp in itself will relax you. I'll do it a couple times and I'll learn to just to sit up straight, stand up tall, and just relax a little bit. One thing I was thinking about when doing this in regards to how you can make it faster or slower is the notion that there's really two aspects to think about when it comes to this vibrato thing. And that is the degree of the vibrato, like how pronounced it is, and that's what I made sure to make that last recording that I made the intro, that I'm going to make the intro. It's pronounced. And then there's the speed of it, the rate of the vibrato. So this is what we're going to have a chat about on the B-flat. 400 model, 1890, 5 plus 1. So let's back up for just a second. So being relaxed is essential for many, many things. But playing this is not just a requirement. It needs to be a part of your whole lifestyle. So that means breathing in your whole posture situation. It needs to be sorted out sitting in a flat chair with your feet flat on the floor. You might say, why are you talking about such simple stuff? But it starts with the fundamentals, it starts with the basics. And that's the way you build on something, that's the way you teach something. But right now you're the student, so you're going to listen to the teacher now. And we were speaking about continuing on with this vibrato video. And this is going to be a short, that's part of it. I'm going to piece it all together now. It's pretty short now. And the idea with this is that you're playing it, and then you're playing it again. And generally I play it about three times, three or four times, one after the other. And your bad sounding part playing begins to take shape once you learn to relax like I'm saying. Like so, like so. 
it's like you're paying attention to how you're playing. You're not really super judgmental about where you're at with it. You're just accepting it, but you're persistent. So the idea is you also don't want to sound constricted and you don't want to become constricted. And that can happen when you're working on such a thing as this. And the other thing is you don't want to do it for a copious amount of time. You don't want to do this all day and get obsessive over it. And there was a time where I did actually feel kind of like back pain. I think I might have been even going at this a little too long. And the following day, actually, I felt a strange sort of back pain. So I would say just um, sneak it in periodically, though. And now that I, I don't carry the B flat harp with me very often, I often practice this on the C harp. But I've been meaning to carry the B flat with me more often. It is, however, important to do it every single day, though, not once a week or once a month. Really, it's about getting into an habitual thing when it comes to something like And I'm the particular type of person where if I let something go for too long, I get out of the loop and then I stop doing it. You have to circulate this into your routine to make it every single day, but don't go overboard with how long you go for like I was telling you previously. Now that's what I wanted to point out to you in regards to that. Because I'm going to insert a video now where this bad vibrato begins to completely change, take shape, become consistent and controlled. And it's going to become like what I put in the intro video, which is um, pretty much 25 seconds of perfection, perfect uh, vibrato demonstration that I could do for you. more in the next part but we've been focusing here on your two hole draw on your harp but if that begins to sound halfway decent and you start to feel confident about it and you start to feel like you would want to share it with a friend then start thinking about the one hole because that would be the way I would go next afterwards and try to do the exact same thing with the one hole draw but we'll go over this more in the future because I gotta be wrapping this one up now pretty soon uh, make sure to hit the bell make sure to hit the thumbs up button and make sure to comment down below that's the most what you're going for is not to include some of the one hole, some of the three hole. No, you don't want any of that. And there's a lot of players, if you look at the whole new, like the whole new, you know, you know, a lot of fancy stuff. But yeah, we're going to continue on with the lessons, but just on a more personal side thing. I'm been a little busy lately more hours than usual and I gotta check the schedule on Saturday and see if it's gonna be repeated because I usually had those nice three days off where I would get out one lesson per day and I'll tell you yesterday I was too tired to even do the first one and I don't have Friday off this time and I was sitting in a leather chair and I was sitting there thinking, I'll get up in a little while, it was around 10 o'clock. I said, I'll get up in a little while and I'll do what I wound up doing today. 
and I was so tired, and I just said, you know what, forget it. And I wound up leaving the chair in here, leaving the harps in here. And I went to bed, I was so tired, but I could not sleep. And I just lied there all night, couldn't sleep at all, tossed and turned, until the sun came up. And then I slept from seven in the morning till about nine, and then 9 a.m. till about 12. And then that was it. And then I said, I'm gonna do this vibrato video today. Because the other thing I wanted to do was One Hand Loose by Charlie Feathers on the guitar. That's what I really wanted to do. And who knows when I'll be able to get to that, to even take a crack at it. Because it won't be this, it won't be this time. This was all I was able to do. Which is kind of depressing. The thing about a full-time job is... Um, unless your, your regular life is conducive to recording. To me, people shooting a basketball next door or... Crazy people all around or what have you. And I'm probably the craziest out of all of them. But I'm a product of my environment. That's the difference. I started out okay. My ultimate goal was just pure peace. Nobody tell me what to do, when to do it, or how to do it, or what I can't do, or no outside influences. Influencing my hearing or my ears, and I want to be able to sing as loud as I want. I want to be able to play to no, with no concern of who's listening. I only want to hear the birds and the wind blow. I don't even want to hear a car engine. I just want to get to that point, but to get to there, I got to get through some really strange times. And those strange times are called right now. And I have to be thankful because a couple of years back I would have just given my left foot <coughs> to get back <coughs> to get back to doing openings for McDonald's. And now I'm doing something j just as good, if not better. It's like, if only you knew me before, you would know how it felt. Um, I have been working on the vibrato too, out and about. I do what I just showed you how to do. So yeah. I think I'm only going to make one shorts out of this, even though it started as a shorts, which is just the vibrato demonstration one. And um, we're getting close to hitting the goal now of the 500. So I'd only ask that you subscribe. And um, if you're one of the old time subscribers on this channel, then all I ask is that you try to play the part of the algorithm right now and go back to some of my old stuff. And if you haven't hit the like button on it, just go way back hit the like button on all of them that you haven't and comment on them and watch them all the way through it even if it's the old stuff just to compare because uh, I don't call it progress for no reason you can see and if you don't play the things that you forgot how to play or if you don't remind yourself of the nuances and the subtleties you'll forget, and there's so many things I have in the works. That, um, so many things kind of like three quarters of the way worked out or halfway or 90%. And I'm doing bits and pieces and then I'm going in depth on the things that I really know too. So it's, um, say is well beyond the combination I just ask that you do that though go back and um, 
just try to get the algorithm to push me over the edge always. Over this threshold I've been trying to get past for so long. And I know people like I was a little girl getting online and being eh, tweaking this just so it'd be a lot easier. So here's how we actually film. I hate mirror selfies. These just kinda hurt my eyes actually. But I actually put the phone up, up against this um old iron here. On top of an iron board. That's an interesting perspective idea. And I switch it around to selfie mode. And there's one of these zoom in cameras that actually flips everything around. That kinda kinda makes things Easy when I do the guitar stuff, but I mean, what can you do? But I gotta get going now, but I thought I'd show you how I do this. Yeah, it's all off an iron board. And you can see this is the recording studio. See the classic layout? Make sure to have a chair with the padded back on it, though. Let's be comfortable. This is where we recorded all the classics. Obviously, like I said before, when we do the guitar videos, we rearrange everything, change the lighting. No hard videos, I keep it like this. I just bring a chair in here, bring a case of harps, and um, don't change much. So with the guitar, I move, I move that whole steel dresser around, bring in a whole new lamp, tall lamp, turn off this lamp, make it nice and bright in here, and then I play in the center of the room, or here I'm off in the corner. And like I said, just prevent, presents a different type of vibe, you know? But, uh, yeah. I think that pretty much does it. I guess we'll leave it there for this one, because I um, gotta get ready for an early day today after tomorrow, and I don't have any days off coming up near future but I did buy that Martin guitar at the right time because it just went up $200 and I just bought my new Martin he wins some of this and that's life see you guys later